Are you in the middle of a build or planning to go tiny? Subscribe to our newsletter for monthly resources that cover all aspects of tiny living. Whether you need help choosing a rig, creating your ideal solar setup, or finding places to park, we've got you covered. Click the link in the description and subscribe today. I had a vision many, many years ago about just being a little bit of a gypsy, touring around. I probably got it for a very good price because of what's in it. Oh, this is my baby. I love this little place. Hi, my name is Jilly Bass and you are here looking at my tiny home, which is called C, capital C, tiny, and it's in Napier Hawks Bay. Here we are in our lovely kitchen, and this kitchen is pretty good for the space that we've got. We, I'm, I'm just gonna go through this side because we've got, which is what I really wanted. And that was a little tiny dishwasher. I think it's important to have that if you can squeeze it in. If you've only got a small space, you need a deep sink. I'm very into design, so one of the things I insist on every property that I have is one of these things here, so you can just take it out of the sink and put it straight here. It's a good use of space. Lots more plants and things along here, but we use this for Airbnb, so we keep it quite minimalistic. So we might have a little a dash of colour here and there, and it just makes it feel a bit more homey. We have cupboards underneath here for cleaning and things that we can use in the sink, and we have storage under here. So we have quite a lot of storage even on the side. Here, this is a full-size refrigerator, which was beautiful, but the problem is I wanted the doors to open this way, and they open this way, which doesn't really matter because we've got bench space here. Our open pantry, we've sort of got dishes that are useful for breakfast, things like that. The stove that we got, it's on gas. It's really, really very, very quick and easy to use. I've got it on three elements. And the reason why I've got it on three elements rather than four is because most people really only use three and also it gave it more space. So this is very easy, easy to clean, easy to use. When you don't use it, you just put this down. The actual oven is big enough so we can have a big roast dinner here. The oven's on gas, goes really quickly. I was really hot on having this by the stove so that people could use their, you know, the condiments and things like that. And we've got a few herbs and things. One of the things that's really important for my design, I wanted heaps of them, were pull out drawers and pull out cupboards, mainly because they are so handy. Some people have what they call as internal heating, and I think that's a great idea, but at the time when I was doing this, is one of the first tiny houses that this particular company had done. So we put this heater in, because we had to be quite careful about the voltage, you know, the electric voltage. But honestly, you know, most people think it's quite adequate. I like the idea that you have a kitchen on either side. I think it's a usable space. Some people use it in an L-shaped, and so the design for me was always like this. My house is like this a little bit, and I have a little galley kitchen, and it's so useful. And so I thought, well, if I'm in a small space, I can't have a galley kitchen, but I can have two sides, plus the fact that this, if people worked here, they need to be able to work at a space. This one, when I first got it, it was one of the first ones that was being built in that year. I think they'd only been going for one or two years at the time that I contacted this company. I probably got it for a very good price because of what's in it and how it's been designed. And it has been, you know, pretty high tech design really. And the things in it, I didn't, they're not cheap. I think it paid about 158,000 altogether. The deck was separate from that, but again, I got a really high quality deck, and I think I, I think it was about another eight thousand over and above that. So it depends on how you do it. You can do things a lot cheaper than that, but it, it does show. And I'll tell you what, there's a lot of wear and tear. This stuff, they have to have very light materials, so you have to bear in mind that if whatever you're doing, it has to be quite light, particularly if it's a mobile kind of one like this. If you want to transport that, it's a real pain if it's too heavy, if the stuff's too heavy. You'd probably be able to transport this on wheels easily because of its size, and you'd, you'd be fine. So 
the living room was a wee bit kind of stressful to design because we knew that we only had a small space. We've got only a small couch here. It was actually one that had to be made specifically for us, mainly because the couches were just too long and we needed, they just extended too far with our sliding stairs here. I love these retractable stairs. I mean, like when you walk up, we have a little handrail here and it's it's tucked out of the way. A lot of stairs take up so much room and I still love these retractable stairs because they take up so little room. The stairs we made like a jigsaw. We made the stairs like that because our washing machine had to go in somewhere. And because this is a big bathroom, not, not everyone has a big bathroom like this, we still had to slide the washing machine. That's a washing machine area there. And we had to slide it in from the stairs. Well, we are in this bathroom and this bathroom is reasonably big, but having said that, because of the stairs here, so that kind of space was taken up a little bit and I was wondering how we were going to get a toilet where we could all stand up. You know, it was a bit of a design to get this in, but this is actually, a, it's probably not new now, Swedish incinerator toilet was really worthwhile having when you actually got Airbnb guests because they want to have something simple and something easy to use. The shower is quite small, it is in a corner and that was because it, unfortunately we couldn't put our square design in here it would probably protrude too much so we decided to opt for one of these and made sure that we had a little top on the roof so that the, when the steam comes up even though we've got the air extractors here we've got that as well so it doesn't get too steamy and feel claustrophobic we had to get the smallest little sinks mm. because we couldn't have anything too protruding because of the toilet but this is actually a cool little one and it doesn't seem to splash up too much it's, it's got a lot of depth I had a vision many, many years ago about just being a little bit of a gypsy, touring around, you know, traveling around all the countries and uh, working out of my little mobile home. I used to be um, a podiatrist, so once I freed myself of that, I discovered Airbnb and I thought, right, i had done that for a few years in another house and I thought, I'm gonna put that into tiny houses, why not? I got quite passionate about that idea. How I got started with this, it took me two years to find the right designers and the right builders to build this place. I needed somebody who would design something that looked a bit like a house that I had designed as well, although I had architects draw it up, but I, it was my design. So they were the people that, that gave me a similar look, look like, something that I wanted. And I went up and interviewed them really and spent a lot of time with them to figure out whether they were the right people. And they were. Oh, this is my baby. I love this little place. So we're going to see a, a, a mature lady, and I'm not telling you how old I am because we're just going to keep that secret, but quite a mature lady, and we're going to show you how easy it is to walk up these ladders. When you talk about a ladder, you freak out a little bit on it doing a loft, but even most people are going, oh, I'm scared of heights. But the good thing about this ladder, it's really, really solid, and you do have what they call as feet controls. So if you start off with the right foot, I always say that people start off with the right foot, and off you go up. There's a couple little holds here on either side, which you can hold on to in this. So it's perfectly safe. This is a loft which was originally designed in case like a couple couple wanted to stay. And I tried it out with a couple of families and I decided that it was not the, the way in which I wanted to do this place. So I, I did buy these couches deliberately so that they could be made into a bed. There's not a lot up here really except a nice loungy area. We are now in the bedroom. I needed to stand up. I didn't want a space where you couldn't stand up. Most of the tiny houses I saw, you are crouched down and you're sort of getting into, into your bed and it felt very claustrophobic and I'm terribly claustrophobic. So I wanted a feeling of space up here. So there is a wardrobe here where you can fit quite a lot of stuff in. There is, you know, space for a charger and there's a little drawer down here that you can put things in. So it's quite nice if you're sort of on this side and you can use this as your table, side table really. 
And the lovely thing about this, the best thing for me, is looking over in the palms and actually seeing the sea. I never thought I'd ever see the sea from here because it's quite low and because we want to make a feeling of, you know, exotic. So one of the things that I needed to design for me was always uh, a deck that was, it was a weird shape, this. So this is sort of shaped as a bit of a fan deck. And the reason for that is because giving it a feeling of space, again, we're actually just using as much space as we've got. And it's also got a cover. So it is raining today and we've got a lovely cover outside, which still makes you feel like you're not cooped up in a little tiny house. So it has a lovely feeling of space. One of the things that I always want in just about every house I have, and I've got one in my main house, is an outside shower. I love my outside shower. I can actually water some of the plants from here and be, um, it's just lovely to have that feeling of um, openness and it, it's very attractive to a lot of people who stay here. If you want to stay with us, and we'd love to have you, because I do love American people, and I love overseas people. Um, so I'd love to see you, love to have you, and love to share what we have here. It's called Capital C, uh, C Tiny. You'd easily find it on the Airbnb site. And you can click the link below. Well, this is Jilly Bass saying goodbye to you, but I so enjoyed our little chat. And we'd, we'd just love to see you and love to come stay. It's just been really fun.